talk to me. WSRadio.com Welcome to Wrecked Reviews. Movies and entertainment analysis using the latest in beer goggle technology. And here are your dubiously qualified hosts, Eric, Paul, and Christopher. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Cinco de Drinko? Cinco de Drinko, yeah. Shark can be here, unfortunately. He is a, uh, he's a bouncer at a... At a bar night nightclub, and Cinco de Drinco is like his. Uh, this is like his New Year's. <laughs> oh wait, no, New Year's he drinks. Uh, St. Patty's so. Day is also yeah. a big. This one this is like his Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yes, I know it's been said before, but <laughs> it's a bigger catastrophe on Cinco de Mayo with white drunk white girls. <laughs> he, I'm, I'm sure he'll have some some nice stories to tell when he comes back. Oh, Jesus I can't Christ. wait! Yeah, all he does is just talk about how he's throwing out dumb people. <laughs> That job must just wear on him, man. Yeah, yeah, he, that, that's what that's what makes him so grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> he posts these huge Facebook posts about these people trying to get in or convince him that they're you know able to get in. It's crazy. Yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, I love it. It's always the see more, and then it's like a page. <laughs> I, I was dying. He he told this one story about a girl he had to th- throw out because she was there. I think the previous week and just trashed and like talking like mad shit, insulting him. And he's like, no, you can't come in because you were you were crazy last time. And she's like, I don't remember that. What are you talking about? I've never seen you before in my life. He's like, yeah, well, I remember you. And uh, she's like, I don't, I don't know. So he gives her he gives her his card, and she's like, oh, I have one of these on my kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh. Well, everyone, it's one week AP. It's after Prince. So, so how's everyone? Why are you gonna up? bring that up? <laughs> how's everyone holding up? Bumming me out, man. <laughs> I, I actually learned a couple of Prince songs uh, with uh, one of my bands. I, I learned uh, When Doves Cry and sort of half-assed my way through Purple Rain. Might mm-hmm. bust it out mm-hmm. in the next show. Mm-hmm. Can you do Lady Cab Driver? I love that song. No. I, I mean, maybe I could, but I haven't learned it yet. You can and you will, and that should replace I'm, our opening. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> our opening song <laughs> should be Lady Cab Driver. Just see how fast we get shut down. <laughs> can you half-ass? Purple Rain, like, isn't that song like thirty minutes long? No, uh, I, I I wouldn't want to half-ass it for a performance. I half-assed it through a rehearsal. Oh, okay. And just kind of playing along to a track with with the band and through the PA, and I don't know, try, just trying to get the chord progression and stuff. It's not quite there yet, but maybe someday. One day. One day. It's fun. Speaking of Purple Rain, what are you drinking over there, Christopher? <laughs> yes, it's been <laughs> nice segue. That's radio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's been a while since I've uh, since I've had beer on this on this podcast or the show, I guess. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, um, we'll break you at some point. <laughs> so it's been no beer, and it's gone from I think one time I had uh, Cardi and Coke for a little while, and now I've been doing wine. And this one is finally the drink that I've been wanting to bring in. And I will seem like a shill for Adam Carolla, who's a very popular podcast. But he's got this thing called Mangria, which is basically sangria. <laughs> mangria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so used to the name that I forget how douchey it really is because <laughs> everyone thinks of him as a man show guy. And I tried a little bit of it b- before the show, and there's nothing manly about it, I'm sorry to say. Oh, it, no. it is the sugary it's thing. It's not even I've... a manly font. It's, yeah. It's all, um, yeah, it's all dainty looking. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truly the manliest thing about it. It looks, it's it unafraid looks like to be Hollywood-y. dainty. Is it really heavy? Is that the thing? <laughs> that is the thing. It's twenty percent, and so okay. uh, yeah. It's so v- for very wine. sweet, very sweet, very sugary. And uh, my, my, you know, uh, uh, the, I'm drinking wine also, and I thought mine was a little bit too sugary for my taste. It's uh, I'm, whoops, I'm drinking a unruly cab california cabernet which is it's pretty tasty it's very fruity uh, it's a little on the sweet side for me but then when i try <laughs> christopher's adam corolla Nothing what compares. is it Man- mangria that thing is like a coca-cola classic I, I think i've left uh cups of it out and then in the morning i'll see that there's actually sugar cubes yeah that have formed wow. like crystals wow. of sugar and i'm like what the because at first i thought it was like a ringworm or something <laughs> i was like what the hell's in this that doesn't surprise me i drink it anyways wow. all right <laughs> so eric this, this should be an easy win for you you might be the manliest I man am, here uh, i am drinking beer as always and um i bought some firestone beer before i Made it over here because I like Firestone. I'm actually hoping to. <laughs> I'm going to be up in Santa Monica this weekend. I'm hoping to swing oh, by shoot. their Venice location. So, 
Feeling Society for Firestone. Have you guys had Firestone? Uh, I'm positive I have at some point. It's one of those kind of that's always around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, around yeah. these parts. Yeah, they're definitely popular here, despite not being San Diego, but they're still a great California brewery. So, really, I think if you're going up that way, you should check out Angel City Brewery. I think that's on the way there. Angel City. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that one's kind of always around. I think it's on Marina del Rey, like in that areas. Oh, like okay. That. I'm, I'm always there. well. If I can convince my girlfriend to do yet another brewery stop, <laughs> <laughs> is she into beer, or she just uh, kind of puts yeah, up with you? She's kind of into beer. It's slowly growing on her. It sounds so convincing. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I will have a beer. She's yeah, yeah. yeah. She she doesn't drink as much as I do. Her, her love for beer is inversely proportional to uh, her uh, getting tired of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She just. Uh, Fine, like, all right, if, fine, we'll go. If you shut up, we can go. I just love the idea, the whole process of going in there with a growler or something like that and mm-hmm. just getting this big-ass thing full of beer. Oh, man, it's just awesome. I have a stupid amount of growlers in my apartment. Filled? So, not filled. No, oh, okay. Just like, <laughs> empty. like, like oh what God. do I want this weekend? Yeah. Oh, I just have the one. I got, as a wedding gift, um, one of these, like, uh, I don't know, the, the Hydro Flask. Are it's, you married? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah it's like, yes, it's a wedding gift from my first wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand this. <laughs> I came this. down to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I just do this on the side. <laughs> this, this show is my mistress, <laughs> if you will. But uh, I got a Hydro Flask as like the wedding gift. Uh, Those wedding are cool. Gift. Yeah. Or for being in the party or whatever it is. Yeah. And so it's a growler size one, though. Mm-hmm. I've yet to fill it up with anything. It's just there. Oh yeah, there's plenty of places that'll that'll take that around here. Just so oh, you yeah. know. Well, I know. Although some... you're off beer, so I'm off beer, so you should fill it up for us so we can drink it. <laughs> yeah. How, how long show. has it been? Like three weeks, four weeks? I've had beers because if you're in a social setting, I'm not I'm not to that level where I'm like you know I cannot have a beer kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just don't buy them for myself. I'm just trying to get on wine. Like I said, I brought it last show. I want to taste all those things that people say is in wine, but I cannot taste. You're not going to taste them drinking that stuff. Even this one is like you'll taste notes of orange and cranberry you'll stuff taste like that. Sugar and sugar and sugar. <laughs> notes of crystallized. I, I've tasted notes in there of uh, Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, Dr Pepper, Sprite, <laughs> Diet Cola at some point. <laughs> I hope. Although the the Merlot is not too bad. That what is it? The gnarly head. Uh, uh yeah. I okay. So then I also got this app where you can scan all the labels, and so I was just going around Bevmo looking like an insane person. Oh, and like reviews. You get like reviews of them. Yeah, yeah. And so, nice. people, and so it's awesome just because oh, some of them. What's yeah, that called? Vin Vinio or something like that. Nice. I gotta check that out because I was in Bevmo earlier today, and I, I was thinking of you know. I, I, I was kind of in a hurry. I wanted to like look at some reviews, but I was like, I'm not going to stand here in front of every bottle. Yeah, like, just Google like, do, 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 do. But if it's an app that kind of makes it quickly, we could just scan it. That sounds awesome. Yeah, you just take a picture. And it's just because, you know, sometimes I'm dumb, and so I go by the cool labels. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that, that's. And that's I have to go against, yeah, I have to go yeah. against myself and be like, they want me to like this, or they want me to look at this. <laughs> and so I'm all suspicious about it. Hey, they can afford a good graphic designer. That means it's probably pretty good, right? You're right. That means I've they made a lot of good like money. That. Yeah. Yeah, they're making money or spending all the, the good money. labels. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, of course. <laughs> all the best brands. That's why they have the coolest ones: Cristal, Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always the loudest. <laughs> but anyway, so yes, unruly red, also very sugary. Um, I think that one and Apothic red are kind of these new age table wines that are getting popular, and they're very sugary and very pleasing. But they're you know fun to drink. Nothing like Mangria. But. Yeah. I feel like you guys are just getting proper on me. I need Shark Back. So he can have, like, Sahara Nevada, and I can have like, some, like, beer time. It's either that or water. Yeah. <laughs> it's either Shark sitting over there with a bottle of water, which bums That's me true. out to no end. Uh, well, I, 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 did, I did reviews. I, I did have some uh, Soko with Shark on his on the episode of his last show. Yeah, okay. So he he's back, and I think that was my first time trying Soko. Dude, and Soko, I tried to was, make that my drink for a while. It was good. Like, at, at first they poured it for me. I didn't really feel like drinking it anything hard, and I took a whiff, and I was like, oh, this smells terrible. Mm. But then I, I, I took a sip, and I was like, but it tastes amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's good. What, what's the taste? It's like sugary it's whiskey pretty, it's, Yeah, it's pretty sh- – it's, uh, it's like whiskey and something. I know. Uh, 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 brain, uh, not a bourbon. That's a bourbon, right? It's, it's that and something else. It's like got a taste to it. No idea. But it's 35%, so it's got to be flavored. It's, a little it, bit. Yeah, it's, it was pretty sweet. It was pretty sugary, but it was but it was good. It was a cool flavor. I, I was dug it. Trying to make that my thing, but I still needed to mix it, and that's like a pushy ish move. Where, oh, yeah. What do you mix it with? Cola. Everything. Cola. <laughs> everything I mix with cola. <laughs> Try and make right. it as much cola flavored as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so I get like nice whiskeys and stuff like that, and just mix it with cola. People mm-hmm. will get mad. <laughs> 
like, dude, do you know how expensive that bottle is? <laughs> <laughs> but now it tastes better. Yeah, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> just dump it in. I'm like, okay, now I can have it. I oh. just do it over over ice. I think it's usually enough for me to kind of water water it down a little bit if it's a little too that's, much by itself. That's a man's move. Yeah. I meant to tell you, Paul, uh, Alpine Beer Company does um, some... Gluten-free? Gluten-reduced beer. Gluten-reduced, nice. Okay. Where where are uh, they? Alpine, Alpine. I guess. Mm -hmm. Cool. Check it out. Yeah, it's my favorite brewery. Well, one of my... I don't know if they're my favorite favorite, but... Yeah, yeah, I checked out, I I told you earlier, uh, some gluten-reduced beer at a culture brewery that were really, really good. Yeah, I should do a run out to culture. I haven't been there in a while. They're good. There's uh, there's one in Solana Beach and one in OB. Yeah, they're expanding. Like uh, Solana Beach, I think, is their home location or whatever. Yeah. They expanded. But, uh, yeah. All right. Alcohol. Good stuff. Yep, yep. Everyone's drinking today. <laughs> good day for that. <laughs> my, my fa- one of my favorite Homer Simpsons quotes, like, uh, to alcohol, the cause of and solution, solution to, to all problem. of life's problems. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was a great quote. <laughs> all right. So, um, oh, I, I – uh, Quick note, I watched Aladdin for the first time this past week. Well, really? Have wow. you guys seen Aladdin? Um, the, the original one? Like the cartoon? Classic The, the one? Disney one? Yeah, Good Lord. From, Love that movie. Arabian Nights. Mm, Actually, for a while, I knew all those. Bits pieces, lyrics. maybe. I don't remember if I ever sat through the whole oh, okay. thing. Okay. Like, I, um, I had actually never seen it. My girlfriend made me sit down and watch it. And I always thought Aladdin was the name of the genie. But Aladdin, is, really? the, well, Aladdin is the name of the genie. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, apparently... I have been made. You know nothing, kind of like Snow. Beetlejuice yeah. or something. <laughs> it's like the well, main it's guy. like uh, I don't know. It's like the equivalent of Frankenstein. Like everyone thinks the monster's name is Frankenstein, but it's not. So. What? Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't what, know. what did you think? Does it does it stand up? Yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's Robin Williams doing Robin Williams stuff. So Agrabah yeah. looks way different nowadays. I would say a lot of uh, a lot of military presence now. <laughs> It is. It is. Yeah. It is. It's a relic from the past, <laughs> if you will. So it's certainly changed. <laughs> yeah. But Good yeah, old Agrabah. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Like it was considering the movie we're going to be talking about here soon is uh, Zootopia, which is a the newest Disney movie. Um, is it's it? kind of cool to like kind of do those back to back, like classic. Classic I guess it, is that classic Disney. Oh man, yeah, that's yeah. like the heyday. At this point, I, would say. I think so. I mean, anything around that Beauty and the Beast era is when they were like. Yeah. When I think classic, I think like Cinderella and all that, you know, stuff from like the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid, that's oh, 90s, oh like yeah, like earlier stuff, Bambi, yeah. all of that. Bambi's yeah. fucking brutal. So I was going to ask, <laughs> you, right, so you guys are fucking metal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all kind of the same age. Like we all grew up watching Disney movies, right? I assume. Well, I'm 17, so I've only seen the <laughs> classic <laughs> Disney is finding you. 17, you're <laughs> drinking right now. Yeah. G- give seen, me back that man <laughs> I've just seen Finding Nemo. That was the that's classic Disney for me. Jeez, <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true for some people. Dude, probably, that probably, me pe- out. probably people that drive now. That's like classic for them. Yeah. That's a f- scary thought. Yeah, but um, <laughs> we're fucking old. Yeah, I don't know. Like, do you guys have like a favorite Disney movie growing up? Like, do you guys have like what's your touchstone Disney film? Oh man, we I'm, can do a whole episode on this, man. I'm not a oh, okay. I love this big shit. Disney fan. Probably my favorite one would be The Lion King. I've never seen that one. Because I, I don't. First of all, I've never met anyone that didn't see Aladdin, and let I, alone The Lion King. I know. I <laughs> there's like there's a good Disney chunk that I missed. Like, I don't know. Were you in a coma for a few years or something? No, I, I thought I was like too old for this stupid shit or whatever. And oh, <laughs> I can't wait to have kids just so I can show them all those movies. <laughs> just so I, I always can see. think I'm too old. You should for probably it. have kids for other reasons. Nope, yeah. that's it. I just want us to have kids and wait until they're <laughs> I old need enough. to create life and make them. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna leave for a while, leave them with the mom, and then come back when they're old enough to understand movies, just so I can watch it again. Uh, with you guys fresh watch eyes. this, and then these kids are your problem. Yep. Okay, okay, I'm here son, for two hours. Son, you're you're gonna have to uh, drink a glass of this mangria before you watch <laughs> The Lion King. I hear the word sex is written in the clouds. Oh, that's right. That's one of those. Yeah. Uh, you'll never believe <laughs> how many people miss this one oh, thing. Oh, in the oh and movie. then the, the Little Mermaid poster with the penises. You've seen that one? I've seen that one, yeah. yeah. That's the trident, right? It's the castle. No, it's the castles, yeah. It's the castle. Oh, the there's, castles, a big, yeah. So, there's a big dildo the, castle. The, the, <laughs> the one thing I like about Disney Good. movies is always trying to pick out like secret dark Illuminati like sex stuff out of, of there. Course, yeah. It's Paul's Illuminati quarter time. Yes. <laughs> this week. <laughs> <laughs> the Illuminati quarter. <laughs> this week at Illuminati news. <laughs> like I, I, I can never sit down and just enjoy a Disney movie for what it is. I'm always looking for some hidden hidden agenda. Even when you were a kid? 
Uh, like, well, no, no, not, boy, not, this not when I was a kid. Not when I was a kid. <laughs> this weird kid's always pointing out dildos in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Why does your son see dildos in here? Yeah. <laughs> son, I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> How do you know what a dildo is? You can't be tell, telling people about this. Hmm. Your childhood different than mine. What is it? My God. So what did you watch instead of Disney movies then? Just like well, Goonies I just, and stuff? Well, and, I watched like up into um, Beauty and the Beast. I think it was the last one I saw in well, theater. That's a good one. And then I was like, ah. Uh, I'm like, I don't know, I forget how old I was. Like, I, I got to junior high school or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, I'm too old for this stuff. My God. I'm surprised you haven't dated someone yet that's made you, that's sat you down. Uh, well, that's what my girlfriend did uh, last week. But okay. um, in high school, uh, I took a girl to go see The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Disney one, because she really wanted to see that. And I'm like, this is not one of the better ones. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, it didn't do a lot for me. Yeah. But I, then again, I was like, poof. I was like poo-pooing Disney then, so I don't know. But uh, I liked, have you guys seen the Robin Hood one with the fox? That's an old school one, That's right? That's a really old school one, but that's that's like my favorite one. Hmm. Like I, I, lo- I loved that one that. when I was a kid. Oh, you, you guys should t- check that one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've <I'm laughs> not, not seen that one. No. You guys should go like old school that's Disney. That's old school, old school, man. You're talking like Snow White and then I think it was Robin Hood. I was just thinking right now, what is that gap between... Snow White, and then the '90s stuff. Snow White was the first one, right? the first anime, the first like, colored anime. It's like movie. the it's colored back with in the U. '40s, I want to say, probably Six, yeah. something like that. Is yeah. it? I think it's '40s. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's way old. Um, huge technical feat for its time, which is fascinating, but um, it does not hold up. <laughs> I, I haven't, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that thing. <laughs> the CGI, <is>, certainly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so yours is Lion King. Do what? Do you have one? Chris? Gentlemen, Chris. I know now everyone's all, maybe it's just my generation or something, and it, now it's kind of been co opted by a lot of angsty emo kids. Mm-hmm. But I loved The Nightmare Before Christmas. And that was like my. Was that Disney? Hell yeah. I know it's Tim Burton. Hell Tim yeah, Burton. it was. It was Disney. It was all Disney. And, it was? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And that this one. It does not seem like something Disney would get behind. Now they're now they're into it because, like I said, everyone's growing up and they got money to spend. And so if you go to Disneyland and go to all their gift shops, there is a whole section. Of just Nightmare Before Christmas, everything, just because all these kids are into it. Oh, wait, no, you're right, because the Haunted Mansion, whatever, gets turned into that, yeah. like, on Halloween or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So as a kid, it was just great. It's kind of that whole, like, you know, they're friendly but scary, and so it was, like, the perfect blend for a little kid, where it's, like, that it seemed harmless to a certain extent. It wasn't just scary. Because I was easily scared. As I told you last week, Jumanji kept me up for <laughs> days after seeing it. <laughs> Jumanji scared the shit out of me, so. It, yeah. Nightmare is a really good movie. I've seen that in 3D twice. So once in Honolulu, once in Hollywood. I fell asleep in the one in Hollywood, and the girlfriend at the time didn't know I was asleep because I had the 3D glasses on. <laughs> so it was like weekend at Bernie's kind of thing. Where I was just <laughs> laying back, and she thought I was just enjoying it the whole time, and my head was back. And wow, Chris, it looks so blissed out right now. Yeah, I was just so enamored with it. What so, percentage of movies do you watch that you follow? Yeah, I hear it. yeah we, we hear that a lot on this show. This seems to be a problem. And, 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 and this is a movie that he said is one of his favorites. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I paid a lot of money great. to go see that. <laughs> you go to sleep in ten minutes. Is that that's probably why it's one of his favorites? Because like this is like one of the best nights sleep I ever got. <laughs> yeah, I can make it almost twenty minutes in before, <laughs> before it's credits. Never rolling. seen the ending, but God, those yeah. first fifteen minutes are great. <laughs> yeah, most movies <laughs> you got to pass that bar. If, if if I stay awake for it, then it's pretty good. All right, so uh, we all saw Zootopia. Oh right? shit, we did. Yeah, and I know um, our listeners out there come to us. You know, three grown gentlemen without kids. To get, you know, kid movie reviews, <laughs> especially movies about racism, since we're all, you know, three white dudes. Yeah, three white guys. That's us. Three white guys without kids. <laughs> reviews Zootopia. <laughs> so, I've do never been qualified, qualified before. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, that's right. You're kind of Mexican <laughs> or something. Kind of Mexican or something. I'm <laughs> all Mexican. <laughs> but yeah, this will be great. I'll have to, when my mom listens to this, she'll be. Very happy. <laughs> oh, my, my son finally That's made it. Made guy. it in America. Yeah. yeah maybe He's accepted. <laughs> maybe it's why I started following Trump. Or, I don't know what did it for me. but <laughs> Yes. Three white guys watching Zootopia without kids. Front row um, right. for me. Uh, yep. During the week. So what part did you fall asleep during? I fell asleep. <laughs> once they when she made it to Zootopia? Like, yeah. Once the training montage ended at the beginning of her becoming <laughs> Once a that song kicked in. <laughs> 
That song, fucking that song, man. That was, was it Shakira? Shakira. It was yeah. Shakira, and she's like gotten that, and she got the FIFA song for the last FIFA World Cup. I'm like, what is Shakira doing? What's her agent doing where she's getting all these big ass things? I'm like, I don't she's hear her on the like, radio or like, anything. Yeah, she hasn't been around for a while. I, I mean, bet, as far well, as I know. FIFA seems appropriate for, for I her. I was going to say, I bet in the other, I bet in other countries she might still be big, you know, in Latin countries or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Second. Round two. <laughs> as we get further wrecked into the night. Yeah, but that song was a little, it kind of hit me over the head with it, where it's like, I make mistakes, but I'm going to keep on trying. <laughs> like, try everything with Yeah, it? or something like that. I'm like, Try everything, including okay. cocaine. <laughs> yeah, they should have done there's that. There's probably a ton of subliminal messaging in that song for the little kids. Yeah, they, I must try be everything. super subliminal. Get, get a couple of sex changes, drugs, whatever. You Do know, it all. Some you know, gay guy getting pounded just listening to try anything. <laughs> so we, we all saw um, uh, Inside Out last night. Yeah. Last year for the show. And um, I don't know if I was here for that episode. No, I think you were out. I think that was I just loved. a me and Paul. Was, yeah. that, that was rough. But yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the Satusum? The Satusum, yeah. yeah. Woo, you better have a shitload to say about a movie. <laughs> I did. I took notes for that one. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a good one to do it on. And I wish this one would have been more like, I feel dumb because Eric seems to have a lot to say about this movie, but I don't. I was just. I don't in, know about a lot, but. Um, I was in spectator mode for this one. Well, I, th- I think that's kind of one of the issues with the movies. Like, uh, Inside Out is fairly, um, I don't know, you're learning stuff as you watch that movie. This movie is just like, racism's bad. Yeah. You know, is it? For <laughs> the movie. <laughs> According to Zootopia. That is the question is. <laughs> that the movie proposes. So, I don't know, like, this one, like, I, I feel like it, there was really nothing to learn. It was like, here's this statement, and then... I don't know. It wasn't very subversive, right? Like, there wasn't, like, layers to this thing. It was just, no, like... No, yeah. It, it was fun to watch, like, just the, you know, the, the story of the characters. It was it was pretty, a lot of cute, cute cute stuff in there, but, yeah, not very... Not very it's deep. Pretty, it's really blatant. Like, it's just in your face, whatever. And I, I guess know. it's not it's not blatant, I guess, if you're a six-year-old and when you're 12, someone tells you that. Yeah. Chances are, if you're six years old, you're probably not racist either. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's very surprising to find <laughs> racist. But you might kids. be later. This is to make sure you're not racist. It's like this later movie on. should be for the parents that like teach their kids racism. It's like maybe, <laughs> like I, I wonder like if this. this yeah, I wonder if this is like a tool for that. I don't not know. Not directly meant right. to be, but I'm sure. I mean, because there's got to be kids now that there's got to be you know at least one family in every school, if not every mm-hmm. other classroom that has got two dads or something like that. You know, I mean, these kids must be very progressive by uh-huh. by our standards. Yeah, it's just. I don't know, and I don't know. The weird thing to me was they're using the um, the animal food chain to talk about racism, right? Like, well, I guess if you deconstruct that, it could be kind of weird. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I have a question that just yeah. popped into my head: all those lions and cheetahs and stuff that are civilized now, what do they eat in Zootopia? Ooh, that's uh, reptiles. We, we didn't see reptiles anywhere. We didn't. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're chowing down on some reptiles. Yeah, they got because I would assume then that cows could talk and stuff, so it's not like oh they just eat beef, you know, like whatever. Mm-hmm. No big yeah, deal. So you they, didn't they, see anybody eating. No, yeah, nobody Except eating. They're, they're, they're Maybe all they evolved. Eat humans. They're all evolved. Then you know they don't you know pr- uh, prey on prey species anymore. But what is it that they eat? Yeah, they just put, showed carrots and popsicles. I think. Yeah, that was yeah, it. not very. They're all vegetarians, I guess. And, and that's the the problem with this whole like multicultural shoving down your throat approach is because we don't eat each other. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my America. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was kind of interesting. It was, uh, I don't know, it was cute. I really liked the uh, the Fox character, Jason Bateman. I thought yeah. that character was fantastic. The main girl it was Jennifer something. I Goodwin. loved her. Goodwin. Jennifer Goodwin. I thought she was fantastic. Jennifer. Jennifer Goodman. Yeah, G-I-N-N-I-F-E-R. There you go. Uh, was fantastic. Kind of interesting that they went with, I don't know if she's not, a big actress per se. I mean, you would think I, for this. I was not was, familiar with her, but yeah, yeah me neither. She would. She nailed. Uh, whatever. What was her character's name? <laughs> Bunny Hops. Judy. Judy, 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 Judy Hops. Hops. Yeah, which, Judy Hops. Which is pretty cute. And then I thought Nick yeah. Wilde was a very good name. And then with Judy Hops for the main character, I was like, okay, kind of fun to get in there. <laughs> so I actually. Uh, so you guys like Jason Bateman in it? Loved like, it. I, yeah. I love him. Like Arrested Development, whatever. But I just saw his. 
fucking face every yeah. time the wolf talked. And it just took me out of it. <laughs> but is this as bad as last but, week? But he kind of looks like a fox anyway, so yeah, that it works. It kind of reminded me of what you were talking about with uh, Christopher Walken last last episode. Oh, both him and Bill. That one was ridiculous. It literally looked like I was just watching yeah. a separate movie and listening to a soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a that's how this entire movie felt to me every time he was there. Really? Yeah. Like, I just could not get past him. Like, that's just Jason Bateman talking. I loved it. I love it. Again, his, if, his you're, if you're if you're if you're a six or an eight year old, you're probably not. You're gonna not going to picture yeah. like, Jason is, Bateman. This is, my, this is my own baggage. I'm yeah. movie. I, I realize that. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, aside from that, aside from you yeah. picturing him, it, it was great. Right? Uh-huh. Well, aside from his, I like his character was fine, but uh, the Jason Bateman voice just bothered me. Just because I knew who it was. Uh. I, don't, I know, which uh, it's weird because I know who um, uh, in Inside Out. It's uh, Crap, I just forgot her name. Polar? Polar, Amy Polar. I was going to call her Leslie Nope because because <laughs> of that stupid show. But uh, like her voice, also very distinct, but it didn't really bother me in Inside Out. So I don't know why Jason Bateman's really bothered me in this one. So. And, and then, Eric, b- both you and I thought that Steve Buscemi was in this movie. Yeah, we both thought, yeah, we <laughs> thought the uh, weasel was Steve Buscemi. Yeah, we thought the weasel was him. And, and I was actually bummed out by that because I'm like, oh, wait, he's in uh, Monsters, Inc. And you're just like recycling his character and voice. And then it's like, oh wait, no. And, and I was and I was thinking, like, why, why isn't he movie. playing like a more you know leading role? He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> a side weasel. Yeah. <laughs> Always a side weasel. But it, it wasn't him. We we just both made it up. I it mean, I, like I thought it yeah. was him, but then does that make us racist? <laughs> These all people sound all the white same. people sound the same to us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was him, but just like you guys, I think after the movie was over, I just immediately Googled it, went through the whole mm-hmm. cast, and I was like, so who was that main bunny? Because it wasn't anyone like, you know, yeah. Leslie yeah, Nope yeah, in the write, first one. I couldn't pin it down. <laughs> yeah, and Inside Out, everyone, I was like, oh, that's so-and-so. That's uh, what's it, the Indian chick from The Office, you know. Everyone mm-hmm. was somebody. Yeah. Bill Hader, I think. Yeah. And then one more guy. But in this one, it was, uh, I think it was just Jennifer Goodwin, um, Jason Bateman, and then Jenny Slate, who I thought did a really good job. I as love her. Sheep. We'll yeah, as the sheep. I'm glad that she's getting she's getting a lot of. Yeah, roles. I like her. I mean, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, cracks she, yeah, me she up. was good. Yeah, I love her, and so I was glad to see her. And then, of course, J.K. Simmons. I knew that. Yeah, his as, voice, his voice distinct. Is so distinct. Yeah, and then Idris Elba. I didn't was catch his, that one. Really? No. Oh wow! Yeah, it's crazy. Idris Elba. He's like in two animated voiceover movies right now. But he's got a great voice. Yeah, I love and he him. sounds way different than he did in. And Jungle Book too. Yeah, that's who, true. Who was he? He was a uh, Bagheera, right? Who was he in Jungle Book? I don't know any of the he's names. He's the bad <laughs> panther dude. Oh, the bad tiger. He was a Kiva. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Shere Khan. Shere Khan. Yeah. Oh, okay. right, I've already right. forgotten the names of everybody in Jungle. I don't Book. know. I, I don't recognize his voice as readily. I guess I didn't. I didn't pick that out in the Jungle Book either. The Jungle Book, I got it just because I was like, because with the movie, they got that caliber. And you're kind of like listening for big name voices. So like Scarlett Johansson comes on, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. you can tell. Yeah. Yeah, this one I was doing the same thing and kind of having a hard time except for J.K. Simmons and Idris Elba and Jason Bateman, obviously. I think for, to, for me to recognize J.K. Simmons, I need to hear him say, for the last motherfucking time, <laughs> were you <laughs> rushing or dragging? Father fucking. Dude, we need to do an episode on that one. <laughs> we need to do last year's that, best that, of. I think, I think that that was the greatest moment in cinema of all time. Just him slapping that dude? For the last father no. fucking time. Yeah, slapping him. Was I late? <laughs> You're rushing or dragging? Rushing or dragging. <laughs> oh, that movie was so much fun. Oh, man. I, it's on my list to see. I still haven't seen it. You haven't God. seen it? No, that one I, I really oh. want to, but my, dude, that my, my girlfriend machina. wants to see it, but she's like, oh, God, it's like, she's like, it's too intense. It's, I, I it's, an, watch it right it's now. intense. I'm like, I just want to watch that damn movie. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Whiplash, Whiplash in case yeah. anyone's wondering. Yeah, somebody's yelling in their mic. <laughs> <laughs> what are they talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you guys seen, this is a, this is a side note, uh, a show called Party Down? Of course. No. Adam Scott. Yeah, Adam Scott. Uh, and my girl, Lizzie Kaplan. Oh, God. That's where I f- fell in love with Lizzie Kaplan. My I God. love Lizzie Kaplan. Yeah. Uh, J.K. Simmons is in, like, one or two of those episodes, and he, he just, like, cusses up a shitstorm, and it's awesome. Really? Yeah, that dude just... That was one of the early dude, Netflix shows. I remember where I was like yeah. Netflix, and I was like, Party Down? I've yeah. never heard of this show, you know? Yeah, that, that was, like, the beginning of Netflix. Yeah, that movie had, like, I mean, that show had like fifteen dollars to the budget or something. Like it was just. It was it's crazy. a Netflix it just, original. No, no. It's stars. I think is what it was on. Okay, and uh, it's not on there anymore. Lizzie Kaplan no. is the chick from uh, Masters of Sex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Master of None. <laughs> but man, the show is brilliant, man. I love that show. It's just, I mean, it's one of those like you get a bunch of funny people together and they improv stuff. I'll check so, it out. Party Down. Party Down. Yeah. It's on Netflix. No, not anymore. No, no really? but like I said, I, was... I, I have it on DVD if you want to. Really? Yeah. DVD? What, what, you know what, what, do you, what do you stick that into? You can stick it into whatever you want, Paul. 
That's a great thing about him, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Netflix never satisfies him. Yeah, just dip, you just need a lights. physical object to insert. You, know, you watch it, and then you do the commentary, and then you know what's up. <laughs> and then the last thing to do. Yeah, if you're lucky, you get to flip the side over and pick it in again. Yep, just like a CD player. It just but, accepts it. But yeah, that was one of the early Netflix ones where... Yeah. That was a one, great show. Yeah, where it's one of these that you've never heard of, and that was kind of the Netflix experience of kind of going through, like, I've never mm-hmm. heard of this show before, and then just like, wow, there's two seasons of this, okay, and then... Getting going. And you that watch was it great. like three days, and you're like, "Wow, that was good." Yeah, yeah. Or same thing with another show that we're going to be discovering or discovering as we discover together here on Rector Reviews. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to NPR uh, Daredevil. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But same thing with that, where I had no interest, and then just because of buzz, all of a sudden, eight hours later, you mm-hmm. find yourself immersed into something. Back to J.K. Simmons, because now we've sprouted out from Zootopia into movies that Eric hasn't seen, into J.K. Simmons. <laughs> yeah. And now to go off of J.K. Simmons one more time, as we brought it before, in Oz, which I'm going back into now that i got HBO Go running, <clears throat> I went on to Oz and started watching that, and J.K. Simmons is a Nazi, like, uh, Aryan White supremacist guy. guy. Yeah, and oh, it wow. is crazy to see him in that. He's, yeah, he's great in that. He is fantastic I need to see Oz. I haven't seen Oz. Yeah. I think that's kind of what, what made him, right? I Going back now, there's guys that you see here and there who are like, oh, I know you, and it's cool to see them, but like, little do you know, you're going to end up being, you know, oh. like the you're wife. Gonna, and, yeah, you're going to be. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, like, the first thing I remember him in is Spider-Man, maybe? Yeah, this was before Spider-Man. That was his yeah. big break, Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I guess his whiplash is kind of his, like, renaissance. Now he's, like, a respected, respected actor. He's always been around, though. I mean, he got the farmer's insurance job. He's been the M&M for a long time, the yellow M&M for, like, Oh, yeah, like his voice is so distinct. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, he's, I'm sure he's got a lot of voiceover stuff. Or he's the red Eminem, the dumb one. I forget. The other See, one again, is Fry. Again, I was, I was true as they use the yellow Eminem. I mean, no, it's Fry. It's Fry? I don't Futurama. know. Futurama. Billy West. Oh, okay. He's got a podcast. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but, anyways, all right, so Zootopia, great. Racial undertones. Uh, it be- <laughs> <laughs> it's race. It's race. Overtones. Race relations in your face. In your face. Yes. And then towards the end, the whole thing, we keep alluding to this. It's not just that the animals represent different things. They go into a shop in the beginning part, and the fox is what ends up being kind of a ruse or a hustle, which I hated that line that they brought three times in the movie. It's mm-hmm. a hustle, baby. Cringing yeah. every time where I'm like, oh, this must be for little kids. But and, and, and the lesson here is... Like racial profiling is bad, but then the exactly what you suspect you you, you know they don't want to serve the fox because they don't trust foxes, and he's turns out he's run, run, running a hustle, so it does also break. all sloths or slow, <laughs> yeah, which, which we learned too. Oh, that was that was cute how they brought that back. Where what's his name was driving past. driving. I, I saw that coming when the when he rolled yeah. down the window and he was going to be the sloth. Once again, yeah. I'm the dumb viewer that did not. <laughs> I was completely. You, you just you'll, you'll you'll catch on. Ten, ten, ten more years of watch life. Enough, watch enough kid movies. Yeah, watch enough of these. Coming. Yeah, that and then. Uh, but it was interesting how when she did the press conference and there's kind of like this whole conspiracy thing going on, which is actually kind of interesting. They throw a couple a couple of twists in there more than they probably needed to for a kid movie. Um, and she does this press conference and she says that all predators are, you know, it's in their DNA to be violent or something like mm-hmm. that. And it's kind of interesting because then everyone freaks out. And as an adult, you know, kind of like, oh, wait, she's talking about like racism. <laughs> <laughs> like all so and so are fear of a black planet. Yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. And like the little kids are like just in it for the story. And you as the adult is kind of, you know, seeing something completely different. And you're like, wow, they're kind of very, in a very adorable way, they're tackling this very hard hitting issue. Uh, yeah, it just it's just a weird kids movie. Like like why I it just it, I guess it, it's a good thing to teach kids, I mean for kids to be aware of. I don't I don't know. I, yeah, I, I wonder know. what in the room when they were pitching this they're like and it's going to be all about racial profile. I wonder what like <laughs> age group is this for? Like well, Pixar is kind of for everybody now, right? Pixar is, yeah. I sure. don't think this was Pixar. No, this, this was is it? not Pixar, no. Yeah. It's just Disney it's animation. Just Disney, just, yeah. just Disney brainwashing. That's what I was talking about like uh like Inside Out how it was kind of like a little more subversive and it gave you stuff to think about, and like this one is just like it lays it out all nice and neatly for you. This one was good. Um, Inside Out made me laugh a lot more, and yeah. it was a lot more thought provoking. It was, it was, it was more clever. Of, there's not a lot of goof. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of goofing like, around. Or like oh. Inside Out was better layered, where like kids can enjoy it and adults can enjoy it. This was more cutesy kid stuff. That and then there was that whole Godfather <laughs> like moment oh, with the rat, where I was like. This isn't for kids. They're not going to know what this reference. It's and it's not funny. Joke. Yeah, it's not even funny. It's like, yeah, I've seen The Godfather. Is that I don't get. Great? I didn't get it. I yeah. was like, oh, he's a mouse? Is that he's the joke? He's a mole, like, I think. And so he's talking about 
he's talking like you know what's well, it's his just name? like a character of the it's a caricature of the part or whatever. But yeah, but like, to make him such a... That was like a five-minute scene where it's like, okay, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. And then they bring it back to and you're like, oh, great. The, the Godfather shit. We're doing that again. Yeah. So, she, so she's a police officer. In that, that, that second scene, that he's basically like threatening someone with like torture and murder to get him to talk. And she's like, okay, mm-hmm. not, <laughs> yeah. I need information. This is, this is fine. This is legal. Yeah, turn into the wire. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden. But yeah, uh, overall though, I, like I said, it was... Not, it wasn't like Inside Out where that was really kind of thought provoking, and that was this another level up where it was like, man, it's a very interesting way to present this, and very like uh, elaborate concepts to present to kids, especially. This one was not so much that, and as a viewer, I wasn't really like, I was trying to take in a lot more than it was there. I ended up just kind of slipping into spectator mode because it was just a lot of cute, fuzzy looking animals kind of interacting, and going on this detective thing. Yeah, and like what was that? You know? What was that? Um, I think like they said, like you know. Why solutions can't be like summed up on a bumper sticker? You remember whatever that stupid line was, kind of towards the end. You guys remember that? I'm no. dumb, man. You got to remember. Uh, that. <laughs> I don't. Know, it's something like this can't be like life's problems can't be like as quick and easy as a bumper sticker. But then, like the very like last message of the movie was like, "Change starts with you." It's like, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, that's that can fit on a bumper sticker, like. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. Are you sure this wasn't Aladdin that you're thinking of? <laughs> no, this is not. <laughs> and so the, no, this is not Aladdin. I want to see this, although to this movie's credit, this is one of the movies that I think the best thing about a movie is when it ends and I'm like, I want this to keep going. I want to see the TV show of Zootopia. I really do want to keep saying oh, There's going to be a sequel. Is there? Because it did so well, yeah. Oh, good. Because I'm like, I want more. Give me more. <laughs> Even though it was like, it wasn't profound or anything, but I was like, that was a thoroughly enjoyable experience. I can't wait to see that bunny and the fox start fucking. <laughs> I like, thought about that too. I did like what was the the rabbit multiplying joke? Yeah, I, I thought that was kind of funny. You and your two hundred seventy-five. We're, we're, we're good at multiplying. Or something, yeah, right? something like you we're good at multiplying. We're good, we're good at multiplication. Yeah, yeah that was that, that was, was pretty nice. cute. Yeah. Yeah, did a, you guys have a favorite joke or anything? Uh, you're from some Podunk County or something like that. And she's like, No, I'm not. Podunk is the next county over. I'm from Carrotville or something like that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think I like the multiplication one. Oh, the fist bump was the one that actually made me laugh. Oh, my ass fist bump. Moves, moves which, are in which she was holding that pose and getting the fist bump from the huge like <laughs> rhino. <laughs> that cracked me up, man. Oh yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, so it was, it, was, just, it was a cute movie. It was it was cute. That's what I'm saying. Like it's one of those. It's almost like a Family Guy or Simpsons episode that you don't laugh out loud at any point, but you're like entertained. You're thoroughly pleased by the by the yeah. show. Where I was like, yeah, I really like the main the bu- the main bunny Judy Judy Hops. Yeah, she, she was kept, very she kept me engaged. So. Yeah, yeah. I like her uh, foot tapping <laughs> that they would do every so often. That was cute. Um, I like the sloth joke. It was pretty good. That was. I'm glad that you liked that. And you did you see the trailer beforehand? Because they released one. That, no. Yeah, I, I saw the, oh, did the it trailer. It? Did it ruin it? Yeah, where it was the whole scene. A little bit, but but I I I was impressed that like they they paced it well. It was just slow enough to kind of like keep, make it funny, but you know, moving it along where you're like, all right, come on, let's go. This joke has gone on for like four minutes already. It I was, like jokes that go on too long, though. So you I, do? I think that's why I liked it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and 10 more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. And then I like how they wrapped it around, although I was too dumb to see it coming. So I was like a little kid where I was like, ha, it's a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> In the Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and the Fennec Fox. That cracked me up. Where he's like, if you kiss me again, I'm going to eat your face. <laughs> it busted me up. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll need to go back and see Inside Out, but I guarantee you, more laughs per minute and then more clever laughs where it's kind of like... Oh, Inside oh, Out's oh. a better movie. Like, yeah. This one's really pretty, and, though. Uh, Inside Out was a Pixar, right? Pixar, yeah. Yeah. I think Pixar movies in general t- tend to be, tend more, to be more layered and more, more intelligent. That was a ballsy... That was a very interesting... Con- super high concept, and they made it yeah. work. That's a very impressive Yeah, they, they, they go for it over there. Yeah. That was but, cool. And just, but, you know, Disney's got a billion dollars. They can make whatever the hell they want. No. Yeah. And then in, Inside Out, legitimately twice now, I've watched that movie and gotten teared up when they, uh, they do the whole... What's bongo? Bongo, right? So was it Bongo? Bongo? Bingo, Bongo. Bingo, Bongo, or something like that, or whatever the, the imaginary, imaginary friend. guy. Oh, when he dies? Spoiler. Spoiler. Jesus, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> For all those kids watching. He's imaginary. It's <laughs> an imaginary death. He's kid listening. My God, that was like, Wow. And then the whole bit, anyway, this is not an Inside Out podcast, but that movie is We already great. did the Inside yeah, Out podcast. Go back and we're, to we're, that we're already spo- spoiled it. 
<laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was just, no, it was just do, boring. We're gonna have to do the Inside Out reboot. <laughs> it's the gritty Christopher Nolan yeah, Inside a, Out podcast <laughs> with a full crew. Yeah, with we got eight people in here all discussing in it. But good God, that movie was great. That I can't wait good. for that. I need to look up right now and see what the next Pixar movie is because I thought this was it, and so I was like, all right, well, that's good. Uh, Finding Dory, I think, is a nice one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's about how I feel. All right. And go back to that. That's too bad just because last time it was That's like, another, like, what is that? Is that about, about a clitoris? <laughs> yes, yes, Paul. It's, <laughs> it's just adult a, themes in Disney movies. It's a five You got you yeah. to raise oh, the yeah, stakes. Is there any uh, Illuminati shit you want to drop on us for? With this one? Um, any pyramids? Not pyramids. I, I thought that this was very brainwashy. Not, I mean, whatever. Racism is bad, obviously. But I think this was more about... Uh, like shoving multiculturalism down your throat. Are you against it? Um. Yeah. So thumb thumbs down on Zootopia. <laughs> thumbs down for thumb, multiculturalism. Thumbs down on Zootopia. <laughs> As Paul Moss is whitewashed, Lily White. <laughs> Sean Petty. I, I don't know. I, I think I, I think it's a, a little too just like sh- shoving shoving an idea down down your throat. I mean, it could be multiculturalism, or it could be. I mean, her whole thing that they slam you over the head with is you can do anything you want. You know, and so maybe it's yeah. it could be yeah. gay, it could be multicultural, it could did be. You, and the, and do you guys the, like that cute joke? She's like only other rabbits. Oh, I I brushed over that, and then my girlfriend had to be like, "Is that like you know, <laughs> is that like the N word or what something?" And yeah, like, I was like, "Oh is, wow!" I'm like, "This is a really weird thing to be in a kids movie." Yeah, like, 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 like oh. what that's referencing? Like, I guess that's for the adults that are watching, but like, wow. Yeah, and the kids are like, <laughs> like. Yeah, there's yeah, some that was weird. There's some jokes that the best jokes are the ones that work for the kids, and then the adults know what the actual reference is. And that one, I feel like the kids would just be smiling that they Bunny said something, and the adults yeah. are like, "Whoa!" Yeah. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, what the hell is this? Why is that in this movie? I don't know. That's yeah. weird. But it yeah. was it was funny. I mean, Cause they must have the writers must have been you know slapping themselves in the back when they came up with that one. They're like, "We're gonna have to put this in somewhere." Yeah. They're like, "What are the jokes about racism that we can make?" And it's acceptable yeah, with, like, with rabbits or yeah. With I animals. thought I thought that was really weird. Like, what, what was the maybe, joke? Uh, the, Someone calls her a cute rabbit, and she was like, "Oh, oh she's like, oh, it's okay for for me okay to use for, that word, but yeah, it's not okay for, for you. other rabbits to call each other yeah, cute." Yeah, yeah. But it's like, why why the fuck is this in this movie? This <laughs> and you like, notice that the uh, other girl gets the ghetto pass, the sheep, because she calls her cute all the time. Mm-hmm. So she's obviously growing up around rabbits. <laughs> All right, so we, all right, all right. We, so, we got a few minutes left. Um, always too fast for my taste, but I think this is just the right amount of time since I think we got, what, like 11 minutes left or something like that? Yeah, 15, yeah. Okay. 10. So now let's, I'd like to do a roundtable of what, and I know that we're going to have to do this more often in the coming shows because there are going to be lulls in the movie, not so much in summer, but definitely when we do the winter and kind of before fall. Things That's why we, our show schedule has been a little erratic lately. Yes, I've been asked many times about why we're not doing so many wreck reviews. Or people saying wreck tonight, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> Stay unwrecked. <laughs> if you guys something. want to uh, recommend movies on our Facebook page, we would enforce us to watch whatever <laughs> bullshit you guys want too much. <laughs> yeah, we, like, should, we just like need that, a consensus. Yeah, I feel like that would be something fun to do. That yeah, listeners' that, choice. I mean, we got to do that or do themes. I mean, if we didn't see Zootopia, I think we could have done like a Marvel themed lead yeah. up. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we should revisit Marvel thing because obviously we'll be here next week for uh, Civil War. Is it Civil War, okay. Captain America. Yeah, I, and Cap- I I'm going in cold. I still haven't seen a trailer for it. I just Civil saw the War, one. which is uh, is that uh, predators versus prey animals? <laughs> it's coming! It's coming! The war is coming! <laughs> It's weird that they do the Batman Superman thing. I wonder how closely related those companies are in competition with each other because that would just happen. And now we're doing another movie with the other universe of heroes fighting each other. Can, can I have one more quick complaint about Zootopia? Sure. At one point, they talk about uh, the city is ninety percent prey. Yeah, that's white people. Prey yeah. is white people. Yeah, and then later on, they say it's a um, uh, a ten to one ratio. That's racist, man. And then so, I'm, but, I'm like, but, I'm like but that. that's that's my my issue with it. It's it's trying to be like liberal and progressive, but but it's really racist underneath. That, that, I don't get it. What that you're the, sa- the well, savages, the the, pra- the prey are supposed to be savages. Well, my issue which was is that, whatever minorities. Uh, well, my issue hmm. was that the math was incorrect. How so? There's nine, nine to one. Yeah, nine to one is is the equivalent of ninety percent, not uh, not ten to one. No, because it's for every ten of us. There's one of you. It would be every one out of 
every one out of ten. Not ten. To so one. but not so ten to they, one. That's eleven total. They, they, they that's said, what I they thought said when nine, they said it. And I was like, maybe I'm dumb. They said ninety percent one time and then ten to one another time. Yeah. Yeah. So Disney's teaching our kids terrible Bad math. math. Yeah. It's just it's part of the Illuminati. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that's part of it. It's just make you dumb. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I just want to. That was a stupid rant. Now I'm just thinking about. It. <laughs> anyway. like, I get that gave me a chuckle. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Marvel. Okay, so then Marvel, yeah. yes, is coming out. I was saying that it's very weird that there's Batman versus Superman, and now there's huge posters all over the place of Captain America versus uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> in the uh, metal suit or whatever, and it's, you know they're fighting. So it's very interesting that we're getting a summer chock full of heroes fighting each other. Where it's like, you know, Mom, what the hell? I thought these were these are heroes. Why are they all fighting each other? It's dark. I guess for a Marvel movie, though, if you want to talk about dark, which I hope we have enough time to go into Daredevil, but that's kind of their their corner to get dark, I guess. With Marvel, I've never been interested in the Avengers movies just because it seems like Michael Bay-ish, you know. I like the first one. I've heard the, the first, first one's one good. Were, were, have you not seen it? I saw up until Scarlett Johansson breaking out when she was doing the thing pretending to be captured and then she's like, hold on a sec, and beats everyone up and I was like, okay. <laughs> Tom, right. Tom Hiddleston <laughs> saves that. I, I know. Like, I love that guy. He's like, he's a he's a great villain. Like, he's he's very energetic or whatever. Really? Yeah, and I I tried to watch High Rise for this show and couldn't do it, which stars him, by the way. He's kind of getting some work now, right? Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, done yeah. that, and he did some other one. Where he's he's like in the new King singer. Kong movie that's coming out. There's another King Kong There's movie? There's another King Kong movie coming out. No! That last Maybe they'll was... get it right this time. Who's, who's directing it? I, I couldn't tell you. Off the top another of King Kong? J.J. Abrams? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> There's a huge twist at the end. <laughs> it's aliens. That last King Kong movie was okay just because of the, the insect scene. It was fucking intense. But that was a three-hour movie where... That was, that for, first forty five minutes didn't need to be there. Oh, with Jack Black, I was glad that well, he just got the, the movie. whole. I, I like Jack Black, but that whole like intro, like the whole city stuff, and them on the boat. Ah, whatever. Love yeah, love it. Love Adrian Brody. I, I must have repressed that whole movie. I've seen it, but I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. It, it, it was uh, good until they got to the city, and then the monkey started dancing with her, and it's like, are they gonna fuck? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> like the fox and the rabbit. Any movie, I'm just like, are they gonna fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you go to sleep a lot, huh? They're like, uh, <laughs> they they're, not, they're not fucking. They're not they're fucking. This isn't worth me <laughs> staying awake for. Yeah. Anyways, so yes, uh, Civil War, which I don't think there's been much fucking in those movies, which is why I haven't gone to them. Um, I've tried. I think I saw the first Captain America up to a certain point. Um, I've been told to see the second one. Um, I think Eric said on the last show he didn't like it that much. I am. I'm in the very small minority in that I think the first one's better than the second one. Yeah, I, I, I heard that before. Though. I don't get that. I thought the first one was bad. Bad. I've never heard bad. I thought the first one was kind of universally acclaimed. The like first Captain. America. I really liked the girl in the first one. Uh, the what's her name? She's got her own show now. Which I haven't watched. Agent Carter. Yeah, that's right. I remember we brought this up. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I, I just really like the energy between those two people, and uh, yeah, I felt like she was missing from the second one. Maybe mm-hmm. I need to watch it again. Maybe it was too harsh. I mean, I don't know, like like I said, I'm I, I'm, I'm obviously the odd man out here. I I think Captain America is like a lame superhero in the first place. I don't yeah, know why he he's, he's like he's super really why he gets his own like super summer movie. He's boring. He's a boy scout. Yeah, he's like the goody two shoes. Guy. Yeah, it's which, which I guess which I guess with Civil War will work because that I assume that's kind of like the dynamic there is like boy scout versus a little bit of a bad boy outlaw. There's got to be something either with licensing or some kind of strategic reason why they're making this Captain America Civil War. Because they could have called the last instead of just Avengers three or something like that, you know, maybe just to keep that character in everyone's mind or something like that. Because that's the least interesting to me. I don't know. I wonder if it has to do with the comic books. Maybe like, it is I, a have Captain America. Read it, have you guys read any of the comic books? No. No. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So maybe it's. I feel like there's going to be some geeks out there screaming right now as well. Oh, yeah, maybe it's sure. a Captain America Civil War series that came. Yeah, out. yeah. I don't know if like that's how it got started. But who would read? That's the same with Superman. Like, who would read a Superman comic? He's so boring. It's like, like he wins. He always, <laughs> always. Wins. Or it's Kryptonite, <laughs> and then the, the, yeah, uh, which is boring. Yeah, yeah. And his villains are like I say, Batman's so badass because you know the Joker and all those cool villains are the dark thing. But you know, Superman's a lot of like aliens and gods and stuff, and I'm not very interested in that. So. Uh, how do you guys feel going into Civil War? I mean, it's obviously one of the the first big summer movie here. Are you guys excited? Are you looking forward to it? I I always like uh, uh, Iron Man. Yeah, I really I like Iron Man too. I can't believe you guys haven't mentioned Spider Man. That's the only reason I'm going to see this movie. Spider Man in it? Spider Man's in it? Okay. I don't, I think, wait, I don't you know think I haven't I think watched I knew, any trailers either. I think I, knew, yeah, I, think I knew. I think I heard Spider Man's going to be in it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it. I think yeah, I did yeah, see yeah, preview. Yeah. 
That was the only trailer I saw was just the one where ended with Spider-Man. Did you guys like Iron Man 3? I've not seen Iron Man 2 or 3. I liked 3. The second one I thought was terrible. Really? That's the one with Mickey Rourke? Yeah, and Sam Rockwell. You think you add both of those guys, you think it would be great. But Sam Rockwell is a bad guy? Yeah. I gotta say, all these Marvel movies get like mixed up in my head, though, because they're you know they're always like cross crossing universes. They they I don't I, I it's hard for me to tell which one was an Avengers cross movie, which one was a yeah. which I, one was Captain America, which one was Iron Man. I think I'm starting to learn that I like kind of like the offshoots better, like the like the the ones that that aren't like moving the 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 big picture over. Like like, I, like, like Iron Man three, I liked, but they didn't really have any big plot points in it as far as a whole with the other with the other yeah. heroes in that one uh no i don't think so i think it was just him i know that was the one where on the like posters and stuff he was out of the suit or his face was exposed yeah he, he was not in the suit for most of the movie which which why i thought made it good because it was robert downey jr doing robert downey jr things i think yeah. they got their money on that one because usually yeah. it's like <laughs> cgi guy in the suit and they just do the close-up shot where he just has right. to show up in his you know clothes. look to the left yeah in his pajamas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just shows up to santa yeah. monica and just like okay <laughs> Read these lines and react. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, I like Guardians, which I don't think folds into any of this stuff. So, yeah. I think it actually, I looked on that Wikipedia page of the universe and they are considered part of it. Yeah. Like it has to do with whatever those fucking five, like, special stone bullshit, whatever that is. So, no. that is part of the Marvel? I guess so. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, they have the shit mapped out till like our grandchildren are dead. Like I was looking at that, and that's crazy. They're like, in 2019, there'll be Civil or Apocalypse Start Two or something like that, and it's like, oh my god, dude. Yeah, they'll probably tie in Star Wars somehow. Too. Yeah, like, can you imagine if some <laughs> movie... any people think there's no conspiracies? <laughs> Disney does own like most of the stuff. They own forty percent of this room right now. Did you like <laughs> Thor: The Dark World? <laughs> no, I hate. Good. <laughs> I hate all the Thor movies. I don't know why anyone would watch those either. And the first one had Natalie Portman too, where I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm in. Chris Hensworth is like a fucking brick wall, man. Like that dude, <laughs> everything bounces off of that guy. <laughs> like he it? he he looks the part. I get it, but I don't. His charisma is like zero for me. Just like, <laughs> they just need to like completely retcon, just put in the rock. <laughs> for the next one, he's like, God, if they I'm if he Thor. if they could replace Dwayne Wright with uh, uh, Dwayne Wade <laughs> into the Thor, Dwayne. that'd be so sick. <laughs> I, I like the Thor movies for some reason. I I, I didn't yeah. expect to. No, okay. I, I didn't do think not. I, it's another one of those where, like Captain, where I'm like, I'm not interested in the character. You're gonna have to win me all the, the way the fuck over because I'm not interested <laughs> in all of the character. So the story better be mind boggling. So we all we all kind of have mixed feelings going into this, right? Like. I, it's got I, great I have, reviews. I have so no far. expectations. Great reviews so far. It's ninety three percent, and a good sign of a movie is when they release it early to the press because they're like, "Check it out, we got this." There's yeah. no sad Ben Affleck going on right now. I would like that movie after I've now torrented it and I'm watching it again, and oh, yeah. I'm going to convince myself to like. Told it. you, <laughs> told you, bro, told you it was good. <laughs> I'm convincing myself to go back in time and like uh, it, even though I wish that movie was just Ben Affleck. Because, like we were saying with Captain America: Civil War, this movie should have been called Superman or Man of Steel 2, Batman, or something like that. Or some, you know, because it was a Man of Steel movie, which yeah. I hated. Uh, you, you couldn't pay me to go watch that piece of shit again. <laughs> <laughs> if it was just that scene where Batman's saving yeah. Superman's mom again, just that, except most of the movie, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, that was great. But a lot of Superman talk, and there was actually a scene of him talking to Kevin Costner. Can you oh, remember yeah. that? We spent yeah. five minutes I, I <laughs> in the snow. That. I just remember the, that. To imaginary like, Kevin Costner. Yeah, that shit was, uh, and, and, oh god, that movie's like, terrible. Eight movie, eight <laughs> giving, minutes. It's all like having like flashbacks over here now <laughs> of him <laughs> talking to Amy Adams. At some point, he gets into the this into the bath with oh, her. That's it. Nah, that's oh, it's it. That's it. fast. We never two, got to talk two about beers. That's it. We're done. <laughs> all right. God damn it. So we'll be back next week. We'll be uh, delving into uh, Captain America: Civil War. Hopefully, it's all it's <laughs> cracked up to be. And yeah, the hype up to it. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next time. Stay tuned. Bye. A podcast or radio show on WS Radio is a great way to create content marketing. Turn prospects into customers, into raving fans. Contact Wade at wsradio.com or call 866-WS-RADIO. 
On the internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5, star, rep, marketing.com. You may have heard me brag about Progressive Medical Center and just how much they've helped me with my health. And Dr. Goley, one thing that you've helped so many people with is migraines. Unfortunately, there are millions and millions of Americans who are suffering with migraines and headaches, and they're debilitating because it affects the quality of their life, and they cannot function properly. At Progressive, we get the root cause because we understand that migraines could be caused by nutritional deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, believe it or not, delayed food sensitivities. And once we determine what the real reason is, we put a plan of action together with medication that we get them off slowly and we put them on an all-natural approach and the results are amazing. Incredible. I mean, there's so many people that can say they don't live their lives with migraines anymore thanks to Progressive Medical Center. And that's what's exciting and rewarding to us as physicians because we help our patients take control of their health and that's why they're living well. Why don't you get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today? Don't live in pain. Don't have migraines anymore. Just go to their website, ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. This is your life. Live it well. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com. <laughs> 